What exactly happened on SpaceX's second Starship launch? Attempt. SpaceX just tried the Starship launch vehicles. Second integrated test flight. After 212 days of repairs, modifications, and iterations, and the gains were evident. After several problems with the launch pad, engines, internal fires, etc., the last flight, which took place on April 20 of this year, ended spectacularly. This time, the outcome was completely different, starting with the engine and ending with an explosion. Now that the test was over, SpaceX had a lot of work ahead of them to figure out exactly what went wrong and get the next Starship prototype into orbit. Here, I go into greater detail on what transpired during the second flight test, where the problems surfaced, what to anticipate going forward, and the second launch attempt. You all must be thinking, what are the biggest improvements made in SpaceX's second Starship launch? What are the modifications made in the attempt? Hi guys, today we will discuss the exact scenario of SpaceX's second Starship launch attempt. But before starting the video, if you are new to our channel, do subscribe, it also hit the bell icon. So you will never miss an update in the future. Let's start the video. All of the Raptor engines were chilled with only a minute to go before launch. And with the sunrise in the distance, the rocket was loaded with about 10 million PBS of fuel and ready to fire. There was a brief plant hold as the clock approached T minus 40 seconds, while teams made sure no civilian boats were inside the restricted launch area and inspected every system. It only took around two minutes for the clock to start counting down again, even though space had almost 15 minutes to hold. So the water-cooled steel plate started to shoot water as the clock approached T minus five seconds, getting ready for liftoff. All 33 Raptor engines fired and started hammering the pad at exactly zero seconds. By T plus 10 seconds, the Starship had completely cleared the pad and was in the air. Only four seconds later, compared with the first integrated test flight, which was done by design. This was substantially faster. With all 33 Raptor engines operating well, the car soon started to accelerate. SpaceX altered camera angles to provide a clear view of the booster's bottom, as shown by the flight data supplied at T plus 42 seconds. In this image, every single one of the 33 Raptor engines was operational and not missing. It is noteworthy to mention that several engines were missing by the time the last Starship integrated test flight concluded. About 40 seconds in, they announced that Starship had attained max Q, or the point at which the rocket's mechanical stress peaks, at T plus 1 minute and 12 seconds. At that moment, Starship was traveling at a speed of about 1,500 kilometers per hour and aloft at about 15 kilometers before the largest milestone and primary objective of this mission. Stage separation. These numbers keep rising over the next minute or two. The flight data first showed us that all but three of Super Heavy's engines had been turned off at T plus two minutes and 40 seconds. Mission Control announced that there had been a booster engine switched off a few seconds later. The bottom of the Super Heavy was seen as it changed from a bright light to a dim point. The upper stage engines then fired at T plus 2 minutes and 48 seconds, causing enormous rippling effects in the atmosphere. In a split second, the upper stage detachment from the booster was accomplished, and the Super Heavy started to flip and get ready to land again. In a matter of seconds, the camera switched to the booster, finished its flip, and started to descend. But this also signified the launch first noticeable fault overall. It appeared that some of the engines were attempting to fire for the boost backburn at T plus three minutes in 15 seconds and the seconds that followed. There was a tiny explosion and some fluid leakage. Ultimately, a sudden and swift breakdown of the entire booster occurred at TW three minutes and 20 seconds. After shooting debris and producing a huge white cloud, the camera turned back to the upper stage of the Starship which had been ascending during the entire explosion. After four minutes, the upper stage of the Starship was hardly visible. At that moment, the car was moving at a speed of almost 7,500 kilometers per hour at 117 kilometers per hour. The flight data also demonstrated the correct operation of all six Raptor engines. The upper stage kept accelerating and approached its suborbital target during the following three minutes. This continued until about eight minutes into the film, at which point the car was hardly visible. When examining T plus eight minutes and eight seconds closely, 
Significant atmospheric disruptions and ripples can be seen, suggesting the possibility of an explosion. Keeping an eye on the flight data, you can observe that all six engines ceased operating at the same moment and the vehicle's speed likewise ceased rising. The Starship engine turnoff was planned to occur at T plus 8 minutes and 33 seconds into the flight, according to the flight profile. A screen stating that the signal was still being acquired was then cut to the stream. The assumption among SpaceX commenters at the time was that the vehicle was still intact and had just started its orbit around the planet. That is, until they claimed, quoting, that they had lost the second stage data. We believe we may have lost the second stage because we haven't received any additional information since we were informed in a callout that we were in terminal guidance. It was then discovered that the flight termination system's activation was the reason behind the second stage explosion. The reason for this is unclear. However, it's possible that the upper stage got off course. There was a problem with the engines or anything went wrong. In any case, this concluded that Starship's second integrated test flight was successful for the firm as its main goal was to finish stage separation. We can anticipate hearing a lot more from the organization in the days to come as they work to pinpoint exactly what big improvement occurred. Biggest improvement. The second test flight of Starship by SpaceX showed significant advancements over its first launch. The booster would have completed a boost return burn before simulating a landing over the Gulf of Mexico. The upper stage would have coasted around the planet for almost an hour and a half before crashing back into the atmosphere. The second flight introduced the water-cooled steel flame deflector. Modifications to the padded base and a new electronic thrust vector control system for the heavy Raptor engines. This is encouraging since it appears the pod has not only kept the car and the other structures safe, but has also remained intact. SpaceX wants to launch, collect data and launch again to assess the condition of the pod and other facilities. Plays a significant part in how quickly the business can get ready and relaunch. The new electronic thrust vector control system for the extremely massive Raptor engines appears to have been a considerable improvement. A few problems stood up as the primary causes of the first flight's failure. For instance, the Raptor engines encountered several issues during the test. During the launch phase, some engines were disabled and others failed later in the flight. Eventually, the spaceship also lost control of the Raptor engines due to corrosion vector which caused the rocket to start tumbling uncontrollably. This time, all 33 Raptor engines appeared to have been operating as intended and without any problems up to stage separation. Neither the little explosions nor the partial power outage observed on the first trip occurred. Interestingly, the next Starship prototype is already far more advanced and updated than the rocket we just saw, even without the application of any new knowledge learned from this test flight. The future of Starship appears to be very bright since SpaceX is refining the vehicle's design and construction with every new prototype. As SpaceX determines exactly what worked and what didn't, the upcoming weeks will be filled with analysis and discussion. Based on this knowledge, SpaceX will apply it to the next launch vehicle and attempt to launch it as quickly as possible. In a few short years, real humans may board Starship for the first time if the upcoming test campaign proceeds as planned. Starship was just chosen by NASA to be the first unimproved lander for the Artemis moon program. In this instance, the Artemis 3 mission, which is scheduled to fly in 2025, will use a SpaceX ship to land people close to the lunar south pole. In addition, SpaceX has already sold two private Starship journeys around the moon. While there have been doubts about SpaceX's ability to finish Starship on time, this test flight is a significant step that we should all be excited to witness in the years to come. Although it wasn't flawless, SpaceX's second integrated test flight of Starship succeeded in achieving the mission's primary objective of stage separation. We'll have to wait and see how things develop, as well as how they affect the space sector. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give our video a thumbs up. This keeps us motivated to make more interesting videos like this.